Welcome back folks. Today we're talking about Salesforce certifications and in a world where there are over 30 different Salesforce certifications, how do you know which ones to take to stand out in the job market? Especially in the 2020 Salesforce job market where your competition is as fierce as ever. Now a Salesforce certification on average will cost you around $500. Even though most certifications are priced between $200 and $400, you're very likely to fail at least a few of them. Heck, I know plenty of people who have failed the same certification three times in a row or more. Now it's not cheap, and with that in mind, I want to make sure you get the most value from each of the certifications you take because there's a lot of misconceptions here. And there are a lot of certifications out there that literally provide zero value on your resume. In fact, they might even provide negative value because you could have used that time to pass other certifications instead. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go through each Salesforce certification rank them, and tell you if it's fantastic or if it's a dud. But first, a word from our sponsor. Studying and learning all the required material for a certification can be overwhelming. It's easy to get lost and to waste time, as you must become familiar with every topic on the exam guide. Focus on Force provides study guides and practice exams to help you prepare efficiently and effectively for Salesforce certifications. Practice questions by exam guide topic. Take a full practice exam or try a random question bank exam. In addition to the questions, there are also detailed explanations, reference links, and screenshots created specifically to show you what something looks like on the platform. After every release, the team at Focus on Force goes to work to update the study guide and the practice exam for changes both from the release and also any changes in the exam outline. You'll also have support in the active forums when you don't understand something and need some help. If you want to join the thousands who have chosen Focus on Force study guides and practice exams, use the coupon code SFDC2020 for a 25% discount. All right, back to the main video. Let's jump right into this. I'm going to rank each Salesforce certification and assign it to a tier. Let me explain to you the five tiers. We got S rank. Now, this is the best of the best. This is God tier. This is like when Charmander evolves into Charizard. It's a game changer. Earning any certification in this tier will immediately open up big career opportunities for you. Then we have A tier. Now everything here looks great on your resume. And it doesn't just look good. It stands out a cut above the rest and employers really like these. Then B tier. Now these have widespread values. Just don't expect any of these to significantly change your job prospects. C tier. Now these generally have little value, but for the right company, they could be important. It's niche value here that I would only get if I was looking for a very specific type of Salesforce opportunity. Finally, D tier. Now these certifications are worthless, except they are great for increasing your FU count of certifications. Now your FU count of certifications is when you have so many certifications that people stop caring which certifications you have. They just assume you have everything and you've reached a level of expertise in Salesforce that can no longer be questioned. I personally have 18 Salesforce certifications, which is well into the FU territory. I mean, I have so many Salesforce certifications that I don't even put them all on my resume. It would take too much space. The only reason I get another Salesforce certification is to say I have 19 certs, which sounds a little bit better than saying I have 18 certs. Which cert I choose for number 19 literally doesn't matter. Heck, I might choose something from the D tier just because they're so worthless that they might become discontinued soon which makes them a valuable collector's item. All right, here's the site we're gonna to use to make our certifications tier list. I'll have a link in the description below for you to access this as well. We're gonna start right here with the D tier. And right off the bat, I'm gonna put two of these into the D tier. I've really never heard of the education cloud or whatever B2B commerce is, so I'll see you two later. Peace. Einstein Analytics belongs here too, sadly. It's a product not widely used and I have a feeling Tableau is just gonna deprecate Einstein Analytics. If you didn't know, Salesforce recently acquired a direct competitor to Einstein Analytics called Tableau, and even pre-acquisition, Tableau was super hot. And at the same time, I know maybe one team that really uses Einstein Analytics, and I'm sure they regret it, and I may or may not be a member of that team. The final one that goes here, and I feel really bad for doing this, but Nonprofit Cloud falls in the D tier. I have nothing against nonprofits, but a few things about the NPSP world is true. First of all, it's a different world than normal Salesforce. I don't see many people really crossing over between nonprofit Salesforce and regular Salesforce too often. 
and usually people seem to specialize in one or the other. Also, there's just a lot more jobs in the non nonprofit world, and it should come as no surprise that there's also a lot more money in the non nonprofit world. So I don't necessarily like going too hard on the nonprofit side of things. Controversial take, I know there are a lot of great things about the nonprofit world, and I would really love to be wrong about this take. That'll be it for the D tier. I think most certs have some value, at least in a certain niche, but those are pretty rough. Let's go to the C tier. Now everything marketing cloud or Pardot related immediately goes C tier. That's because these two products aren't that related to Salesforce. Salesforce acquired a few companies and put it in its product suite. So now we have marketing cloud. Learning these won't really make you a better Salesforce professional, but they will make you a better marketing professional and in the right niche, they have a ton of value, so C tier. Field Service Lightning, CPQ, and Heroku go here as well. Now, these products are growing quite well, but they just haven't really broken into the mainstream yet because not every company would even consider using them, so C tier it is. Final cert on the C tier, and this one may be controversial too, but I'm gonna add the standard administrator cert here. I feel bad about this one because people are really proud on social media when they pass it, and because I consider it a pretty hard certification, but in reality, it just doesn't have much value because you're just expected to have this cert. It's the rock bottom, bare minimum that you have to have. So sorry if you worked really hard on it, um, but uh, don't give up on your dreams. B tier time, these are some decent certs. Now, sales, service, and community cloud certs belong here. You can pick any random Salesforce org on the planet and chances are they use at least two of these products. Sales and service are obviously the biggest ones, but community cloud is pretty big too. Platform app builder goes here too. I consider it kind of like admin 1.5. Now let's start on some core designer certs. These are certs I've colored blue because they're on the architect path. Most of these certs are strong certs. The architect path is considered the top of the mountain, of course, but these maybe are the least interesting of them. We have identity and access. I've passed this cert myself and I still really don't know what it is, but apparently it has something to do with single sign-on. And in real life though, you're just gonna Google this info, set up single sign-on once, then never think of it again. Then we have development lifecycle. This one might be important for hardcore Salesforce engineering teams, but most orgs don't really have a fancy development process anyways, so they won't look for this cert. Data, architecture, and management. This one's probably the strongest of the B tier, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really stand out because every Salesforce person manages data and getting a cert for that isn't all that compelling. All right, let's go to the A tier now. Now these all look great on your resume. Advanced admin, this cert is the ultimate value cert. It's probably the easiest cert in the A tier to get, and it's the one you'll see most often listed on job descriptions. Employers really love it because it grades your fundamental Salesforce skills. This is an easy A tier pick. Platform Developer 1. Now, this one's special because it's one of the few certs that tells employers you really know how to code. Getting this one really ups your value on the market, and it used to have even more value, but a lot of people are passing it these days, but it's still a solid A tier. Shameless plug, I believe anyone can learn to code, and check out my coding tutorials link in the video description below if you want to code and pass this cert. JavaScript Developer 1. This cert is the new hotness and it just came out and it's one of the few developer related certs. So seeing it on a resume will always be a pleasant surprise, especially these days in Lightning when everything's in JavaScript, having this cert looks great. As an added bonus, this cert probably looks good outside the Salesforce industry too. On the architect side, I'm gonna add the sharing and visibility cert too. Security is such a big deal these days that having a cert that tells employers you're essentially a security expert is fantastic. Integration designer belongs here too. Salesforce as a product has become so strong that most companies want Salesforce to be the one tool that everyone logs into to see everything. So there's more and more integrations going back and forth into Salesforce and being an expert here will make your resume stand out. Finally, I'm gonna add application and system architect here too. Both are really strong certs, no doubt, because they're just under the top of the technical architect pyramid, but honestly, a surprisingly large amount of people have these certs. And I honestly don't think most architect designer certs are as hard to get as most people think. System architect, though, I almost put in the S tier because it's the rarer of the two. 
but I don't think earning that certification really opens up the floodgates of jobs for you as I'd expect from an S tier certification. Which brings us finally to the S tier. Now only two certs belong here. Platform Developer 2 opens up doors for you. It's the type of certification that makes some employers want to hire you without knowing anything else about you. It's the toughest developer cert in a job market that is desperately begging for more developers. So you couple that with the fact that many employers don't even know how to evaluate your coding skills and you have yourself a winner here. I will say though that this cert is slowly losing value since its programming assignment is now a super badge with unlimited offline attempts instead of the previously $400 human graded project, but it hasn't degraded nearly as quickly as I thought it would and the increased demand for developers has kept its value high. Finally, the CTA, the Certified Technical Architect. This is by far the most valuable certification you can get. It's the last certification that is still human graded and it costs $6,000 to even attempt it since Salesforce flies in human judges who listen to your solution to a 12 page project that you just received hours earlier. And only about 200 people in the world have passed this, which means there are more astronauts on this planet than CTAs. Personally, I would almost hire any CTA without knowing anything else about them. And uh, oh yeah, I've taken and failed this test personally, so I have a little extra respect for it. You can call it that, but PTSD might be more appropriate. The whole reason I made this YouTube channel is so I can have an excuse not to continue studying for it and lose another $6,000. All right, that's our full tier list. I'll have a link to it in the description below if you ever want to reference it. In future videos, I'll also tell you how many Salesforce certifications I recommend getting and what order to get them in. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe. All right, that's it for me. I'll check you later. To all you Salesforce certification dreamers out there, go get it.